Senator has the floor. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, uh, a couple of points. Number one is uh, I note with no small amount of irony that uh, today when the uh, pay increase came up that there were nine uh, Senate Democrats uh, who uh, voted, who would not vote for a budget, but who would vote to raise their pay. It is also noteworthy, Mr. President, that you know, this is a road that we've been down before. We've approached sine die without a budget before. And in the past, we've been uh, approached by our local governments to pass a budget, and asked to pass a budget so that they can move forward with their budgeting processes. And uh, today was no different. We saw letters today and a press conference today by local government officials. Now, hearkening back to 2004, when there was another budget standoff, local governments that year were likewise active in encouraging a timely budget resolution. In fact, on March 22nd, 2004, Arlington County, of all folks, issued a press release titled, Arlington Board Chair Urges Governor and Legislature to Pass a Budget. The release talks about a uh, much better known today, Barbara A. Favola, Chairman of the Arlington County Board of Supervisors, and her counterparts on the, uh, from, uh, from six Northern Virginia jurisdictions who sent a letter to the governor encouraging the passage of a timely budget. And I want to read to you a couple of excerpts from that 2004 letter from those local government officials, including the chair of the Arlington County Board. That letter began by saying, as elected local leaders of Northern Virginia's cities and counties, we urge you to continue your Herculean effort to forge a Virginia budget for the next biennium. It goes on and states, local officials develop budgets with the expectations of a state, uh, of a state budget, uh, a state passed through to fund K through 12 education, transportation, public safety, and human services. It is critical for local leaders to know what the state transfer is before we adopt a budget and set real estate tax rates. The letter also notes problems that will befall public education without a budget. If a state budget is not passed, teachers will not receive raises. Some teachers' positions will not be filled. Children will be educated in larger classrooms. These impacts are catastrophic to Virginia's families who dream of giving their children the best education possible. It further notes that the General Assembly must adopt a budget. Delayed action on this important issue would be a gross abdication of responsibility, an abdication not seen in the history of the Commonwealth. And the letter is signed by mayors or board chairs of Arlington, Fairfax, Loudoun, and the cities of Alexandria, Falls Church, Fairfax, and Manassas Park. Mr. President, the words of these local officials eight years ago ring true here today. I would encourage our senators, members of this body, to fulfill our duty in passing a budget so that local governments can follow through with their responsibility. For the reasons that each of these local leaders laid out eight years ago, we cannot allow this budget impasse to continue. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks, sir.